Hello, if we can put the show date and learn objective, if that's the, if you're if you're doing this on a different day, just write today's date, please. It doesn't matter. Okay. Could you write there? So <clears throat> show date and learn objective. And could we then please pause the video while you're doing that? Then press play when um when you're ready. Okay. Right, so this lesson we are it's going to be a lot of kind of stuff you'll have probably covered last uh, year. Um but we still need to just have a kind of a reminder about how to do certain things when we're dealing with fractions, okay? So first of all, let's have a very quick reminder, okay? Say, for example, here we have, <clears throat> uh, what exactly is a fraction? So this shade, the shade is a half, isn't it, okay? So a fraction is 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 part of a whole, isn't it? It's, it's, it's less than one, it's part of a whole. So this shaded here, I've got one side shaded, one part shaded in, two parts all together. And they need to be equal sizes, don't they? Obviously, they're not going to be when I draw them. Okay. And just the same then with this. So if we've got, uh, oops, that's not very, uh, so here, of course, uh, this is the hole. Um, and therefore, I've shaded in one part out of one two three four five six so it's one six isn't it just a bit of a reminder about what fractions are isn't it it's the part of a whole okay <clears throat> right let's start off with simplifying we'll be really quick on this okay so sometimes you might get an answer of six eighths and you've got to simplify that to its lowest form isn't it so you've got to divide both but both the uh, numerator and the denominator the numerator is the top number denominator the bottom uh, just remember you've got to divide those by the same number. I can see 2 goes into both of these. So if I divide them both by 2, I get 3 quarters. Can I go any further? On this, In this case, I can't. Okay. Um, you could have 15 twentieths. And I'm looking again for the, um, <clears throat> the highest common factor of 15 and 20. And I know there's 5. So I'm dividing both by 5. Okay, and then I get three quarters again, and I can't uh, simplify that any further. Okay, if you get 15 over 45. Now, if I'm looking straight away for the highest common factor of those, I kind of know what that is in my head, but um, what I could do first of all, I can see that five is a factor of both, so I can divide both by five. Okay, so I get three over 9 and then I can see oh hang on again they're both factors of 3 isn't it because that wouldn't be fully simplified uh, 3 is a factor of both sorry uh, 1 third okay and I could have done that straight off okay because the <clears throat> highest common factor of 15 or 45 is 15 so if I divide it by 15 divide by 15 okay I'm sure you will not remember how to do um, to do these, so again, I can have 16 twentieths, and one way is, is just to sort of keep halving until you can't half anymore, isn't it? Okay, four fifths, right? Okay, very quickly, okay, can you uh, write out the question and then the answer to these, please? Just simplify those, it shouldn't take you very long, okay? Pause the video while you do that, and then we'll move on, okay. Right, hopefully that's all done. So let's have a look. Uh, see the answers here. If we go one fifth, uh, I think it's one fifth as well, isn't it? Six, divide both by six, yeah. Then we've got this one, we can go into nine twentieths. Here's another one we can divide into 15, isn't this? The lowest is two thirds. This one, let's have a work through 30 over 64. And let's halve it again. Uh, 15 over 32. Can I go any further than that? No, I can't. Okay. So just give those a quick tick and then we'll move on. Okay. Right. So that's simplifying. Now remember when you uh, always try and simplify an answer. Okay. Always try and simplify your answer uh, at the end of a question. Okay. Uh, right. So let's have a look. Uh, can you remember the name of this type of fraction? Okay. Uh, in this case, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. 
okay? What's the name of this type of fraction? Of course, it's an improper fraction. It's an improper. Some people might call it top-heavy fraction, um, but improper fraction. <clears throat> and what we need to practice today is just to remind ourselves how we turn this improper fraction into a mixed number. Now, a mixed number is a number like 2 and uh, 7 tenths, okay? Where you have a whole number and a fraction that's a mixed number okay so I want to turn this into a mixed number and I do that by just seeing how many times the denominator goes into the numerator how many times does 3 go into 8 it goes into it twice uh, remainder 2 isn't it so how many 3's remain 3 6 2 remainder 2 so that would be uh, just 2 and 2 thirds okay uh, let's have a go at another one just as a reminder so 23 over 5 is another improper fraction I'm going to convert that to a, uh, a mixed number how many fives are in 23 5 10 15 20 that's 4 remainder 3 4 and 3 fifths okay uh, 22 over 6 how many 6's in 22? 6, 12, 18, 3, remainder 4. So we've got that thing with 3 and 4 6. Now, <clears throat> can we simplify this? Yes, we can. Okay. We can simplify that so it becomes 3 and 2 thirds. So always, yeah, two, 3 and 2 thirds. Always look to simplify your answers, please. Okay. Uh, and you can just, uh, once with slightly bigger numbers, it's just the same, isn't it? 137 over 20 how many 20s in 137 that would be 6 remainder 17 okay I'm sure now that's uh, all coming back to you turning improper fractions to mixed numbers could you please just do these four questions write out the question okay and then put the answer in afterwards okay pause the video while you do that okay and then we will carry on afterwards okay <clears throat> Okay, good. Now, uh, just to remind you, if there is anything you're struggling with, uh, you can. I will be on the call on the Teams meeting throughout this, throughout the throughout the time that this lesson is due. Okay, and um, and also you can also go back and relook at things on the video, can't you? Just go back and recheck. Uh, I'm, I'm zooming through this quite quickly because I, you know, I think we know what we're doing with it. Okay, so let's have a look. This is going to be three and a quarter. How many fives in there? Three and two fifths. How many tenths in 43? Four and three tenths. How many sevens in 31? Um, four and three sevenths. Okay, just give those a quick tick. Okay, well done. Right, and then we go the opposite way as well. The opposite way where we have a mixed number. So let's have a little look. Uh, say for example, we've got two and four fifths, and we want to turn that into a, a, an improper fraction. We will need to do this for some, some of the types of work we will be doing, okay? Uh, right, so we do this by, uh, we take the denominator, we multiply by the whole number, and then we add on the numerator so it's the denominator times the whole number plus the numerator so in this case it's 5 times 2 add 4 5 times 2 is 10 add 4 is 14 it becomes 14 over 5 let me just check if that's correct how many 5's in 14 2 remainder 4 yeah so I can just swap it back just to just to check it if I'm not too sure okay um, Let's have a little look at, uh, so yeah, we've got three and three sevenths. I want to turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. So I take the denominator, I multiply it by the whole number, and then I add on the numerator. So it's seven times three is 21. Add three is um, 24. 24 over seven, okay. Uh, 
five and a quarter take the denominator multiply it by the uh, whole number and then add the numerator four times five is twenty and one is twenty one twenty one over four let's do one more seventeen and two thirds the denominator times by the whole number three times seventeen is fifty one and three and two is fifty three so it becomes fifty three over three okay right okay hopefully no problem with those they we do need to do those especially when we're going to be uh, subtracting some of the decimals okay have a go at those please have a go at those okay pause the video while you're doing it okay and off you go right okay let's have a little look okay uh, make sure we copy out the questions as well, please. 11 eighths. Let me just go. I'm, hopefully, I don't get any of these wrong. Doing them quickly and with a slightly thick head. Uh, 18 and 2. 20 over 3. Uh, 5 twelves are 60 and 7. 67 over 12. And then 93 and 3. 96 over 31. Okay right good so that's some of the some of the basics uh, that we will need to be able to do for when we get on the harder work done okay but i'm going to finish off with something which i think most of you would have done before but i don't know how in how much detail okay so say for example if i've got one eighth and seven eighths okay and i want to know which is the biggest okay uh, now, of course, uh, seven eighths is the biggest. That's the sign I'm going to remember. The crocodile eats the the biggest number. Okay, so we know that that's going to be seven eighths. Now, this is easy because they have the same denominator. Now, a lot of these fractions, when we're adding and subtracting uh, uh, fractions with different denominators, which we will be starting to uh, next lesson, we do need two. Uh, it, it's easy when you have the same denominator, okay? So then, you know, it can be anything, can't it? It can be, uh, which is the biggest out of these? Seven seventeenths or three seventeenths? Okay, clearly seven seventeenths. Because, because it has the same denominator, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so if you're given the question, which is the biggest? Two thirds, okay? Two thirds or seven ninths two thirds or seven ninths now that's not quite so easy is it i know some of us can work that out pretty quickly in our heads but a, a lot of times in maths now as you go through and um, sort of towards your know, gcc you have to prove prove why you think it is so you might think it's that way okay or you might think it's that way but actually unless you prove it either way it doesn't really matter you have to show uh, proof it and you can do that by putting them say putting them both into the same denominator finding a common denominator okay so what is the lowest common multiple of three and nine well that means uh, what does what does both three and nine go into isn't it okay uh, and they both go into um, a nine can, uh, nine is the highest sorry the lowest common multiple of those two so what I'm going to do I'm going to turn them both into ninths now this is already into ninths okay so here I've got my two-thirds I want to turn that into ninths okay so um, all I have to do there I have to multiply I'm multiplying the bottom by three to get to nine aren't I and I just need to do the same to the top okay so that's six ninths so I now know the two-thirds is the same as six ninths okay two thirds is the same as six ninths so therefore here the biggest bigger number of the two is the seven ninths and you can see it's easy when you have the same denominator but when we've proven that this is correct by turning them into the same denominator okay uh, what about um, again a nice easy one two fifths and uh, three tenths three tenths now 
what is the uh, lowest common multiple of, of 5 and 10? Well, it is 10, isn't it? It's 10, so I'm going to turn this into tenths. Okay, and I do that times in by 2, so I do the same to the top. Times in by 2 is 4, okay? So therefore, I can see now I've proven that 2 fifths is bigger than uh, 3 tenths, and I've proven that by putting them in the same uh, used, put, uh, using an equivalent fraction and putting them in the same uh, denominator okay um, right uh, let's have a look at this one uh, so two-thirds and three-fifths now again these are kind of not quite so easy okay, let's just give myself a little bit more space three-fifths there okay so this uh, <coughs> These are a little bit trickier, aren't they? Okay, because I can't see they have different denominators and I couldn't sort of know straight away. I can see they're both bigger than half, but you know, yeah, I could maybe hazard a guess, but to prove it, I need to put them into a common denominator. So, what is the uh, lowest common multiple of three and five? Okay, so let's find, yeah, so we've got three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, 3, 6, 9, 12. 15 and then we've got 5 10 15 so you can see there the lowest common multiple is 15 so I'm going to turn both of these into equivalent fractions of 15 okay and then I could do a really good direct comparison okay so how am I getting from the 3 to the 5 times it by 5 whatever I do to the bottom I do the same to the top times it by 5, so I've got 10 fifteenths. Let's have a little look here. Times it by 3 to get from the 5 to the 15, I'm times it by 3. Uh, so I have to do the same to the top, 9 fifteenths, okay? So I can see from there, 10 fifteenths, so 2 thirds is the biggest, and my answer would be that, okay? Now, when you come to do these yourselves, you must prove it, okay? You must prove it by putting them into the same uh, denominator, by finding a common denominator. It is not enough for you to see the question two-thirds, three-fifths, and think, well, I know that's slightly bigger than half, but that's even a little bit bigger than further than away from half than that is. Okay, you have to prove it by finding the common den denominator. And we need to do that for <clears throat> when we're going to be sort of adding and subtracting uh, fractions anyway okay right let's do uh, one more okay we've got four fifths and then we've got ten twelfths four fifths or ten twelfths so again I'm going to find the lowest common multiple they have different denominators so I'm going to find the lowest common multiple so I'll just, I'll just do the 12s because that's easier than I can work at the 5s from there. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. And I can see 60 has to be the first multiple that uh, will be 5, a, a, a first uh, multiple of 5, isn't it? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm going to put them both into 60ths this time. Okay, into 60ths because I need to prove which one. So I'm going to times by 12, 5 times 12 is 60, so I need to do the same here, times 12, 12, 24, 6, 48, okay, and then the same on the other side, okay, 60, so how am I getting from the 12 to the 60, I'm timesing by 5, I'm timesing by 5 at the top, so this is 50 sixtieths. Okay, so you can see here I've now put them into, uh, I've now proven that 50 sixtieths, therefore 10 twelfths is the bigger number, isn't it? Okay, and I've proven that by putting them in a common denominator. Okay, so uh, have a go at these. There's just five questions here to have a go at. I will put some extension questions on the on the, on the portal, if you want to print those seven, have a go as well. Um, if you've got, only if you've got time, uh, that is okay. So don't don't do anything beyond this lesson. Um, uh, so could you have a go at those, please? 
to finish off could you have a go at those um, and um, if you have any problems please uh, contact me on teams on the chat or email and I can go through it through things with you again all right good luck that with that everyone all right and I'll um, speak to you later okay bye